Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So uh, let us start our lecture today, and this is the second day of week two, right? So this is the last lecture of week two, and today is of January 21. Okay. So as usual, let us see our schedule first. So according to schedule, you see that we have some quizzes due uh, in a few weeks, right? So, so not this coming week, the following week, January 31st. We have syllabus and policy quizzes and we have quiz one and quiz two. These will be on January 21st. All quizzes, all quizzes are due midnight. Okay, all quizzes are due midnight. Okay, so so please read the material first, then take the quiz. Okay, only the syllabus and policy quizzes are allowed to take multiple times, but other quizzes are allowed only one time. You will have at least an hour to take the 10 point quiz. Okay, so all quizzes are open book. OK, so you can uh, uh, I discourage to get the answer from someone else, but I encourage you to read the your PowerPoint slides and book. You may need it. You can do Google search. But I like you to learn yourself. OK, while taking the quiz. OK. And one thing that every day I will not be taking that there is a quiz due, there is a quiz due. There is a quiz due, okay? So please be self motivated to check the uh, D2L and uh, course schedule for the upcoming quizzes, okay? So in uh, actually this class is uh, is supposed to be to meet face to face. Although you see that in last lecture, so there are many people they did not join one line, so you face issue. There was internet issue in this room. So my record. <laughs> my lecture was not recorded correctly with my voice. So what I did, I will in alternatively I added my previous semester's video. To this lecture to your section, so previous semester's video. This part of that, the that is almost pretty same thing. So this one. Variable data type and their use. So this is from the previous semester. So almost same thing. You please watch if you did, did not watch, did not attend my lecture last in last lecture day, day before yesterday. So please watch this, okay? And then today, but I can quickly recap these main key points. And as I mentioned that, please give attention to this lecture because you will get some quiz questions and test questions from this this module okay so <clears throat> so what we discussed variable right a variable is a name of a memory location in programming perspective okay so in mathematical perspective we use a variable to hold some value some data that can vary so computer concept of a variable programming concept is a little bit different that we gave him address name of a memory location. OK, for instance, every one, almost all houses in this city has a house number, right? House number, let me 205 prime drive, Atlanta, right? 203, maybe King Drive. OK, so you know that there are some houses they have their good name also. So people know you can go to that house by giving their address, actual at physical address to your GPS. Your GPS will take over there, but people know that. Or otherwise you can, if the house is very familiar or very popular, then people know it by its name, right? Maybe White, White House. Almost everybody. <laughs> 
in this country and many people in this world know like white house right it is maybe 1800 uh, pennsylvania 16 pennsylvania i went there several times but i forget that okay so people know that in multiple ways right so the okay so why do we use variable in another way so we use our mobile device like phone right we save our friends and family our customer numbers in our phone right mobile phone we, in our contact list we save their number how do we save their number we could save their number by their number but in general we do not do that we save their number by their name right so the, what is the advantage of saving someone's uh, phone number by their name instead of by their number if i can recognize easily right if i was not allowed to save my friends number by their name it would be very difficult for me especially for me okay, i'm a dull headed person so i would forget their their number right so no matter if you have like how close your friend is how bosom your friend is but if you have if you have 100 or 1000 friends you cannot remember their phone number so the easiest way these devices give uh, uh, devices give us that to save their number by their name, right? Okay. Okay. Then what are the advantages of saving someone's name by their name? Someone saving uh, their number by their name. Whenever we want intend to make a phone call, we just search for by two ways. One one thing that we can search by their number, or we can search by their name, right? Okay, easiest way is to buy search them by their name, right? Okay, now when we make a phone call, so for instance, someone I search my friend name or someone name, then we tap and then we make a phone call, right? So then whenever we make a phone call against a name, right? Save name. Where does actually the phone call go? To their name or to their number? To the number, right? because there is a link between the name and the number, right? So name is a variable. A number is the memory location in computer programming perspective, okay? So whenever we write our program, we give value to the variable name and the variable puts the value in actual memory location. We do not need to know where the data actually, the data, is, is store is being stored right so for instance when in, we use a cellular phone we make our phone call we don't need to know where is my intended person is living actually if, wherever he lives if it, he is in my network area his network area phone will go right will be ringing right the so same concept we use for variable so as we see in our last lecture that we discussed some programs like hello world programs are some programs to take your name and number and, and age and to display those right so those on those in this program it is easier for us to use variable okay so one thing that another thing that we discussed that in order to declare a variable we need to declare its data type first in most the at least the three languages we are discussing here but some languages like javascript it it asks us to give the name first then the data type first okay so if you read the book so for this class in order to understand everything you must need to read book so our book all the textbooks are free and available here on the resource page, okay? So for instance, lecture programming fundamentals, you can open this book, or there is a C++ book, and then Java book, and C Sharp book. All, almost all three books have same concept, okay? At least read one book. Because in the lecture, I will not go through in depth, okay? I will not go through in depth, so if we download this book, maybe print in PDF version. 
so you see that 400 more than 400 pages in this book right so if i search for data types okay so it is coming for data type it says that data types there are there, those are the basic or primitive there are eight primitive data types boolean character integer short byte short byte integer long float double boolean okay so at least you need to read the book so you see the in data type what is mean by data type so what are the examples of of like data types and how do we assign those in our program so there are many examples some in the, maybe this book has is in pseudocode format but in if you go for java book actually java book or c++ book you will get so data type you see that it has data type so it has examples and at least go through one time the chapters okay then you will learn something more because in this lecture i'm giving the key points i cannot discuss in detail okay but let us do if you do a google search google search so java data types and range okay so each type so you see the w3school.com so if type has its own range range means okay so these are the primitive data types the primitive data types that means this type hold only one kind of value so the lay the, the lowest one is this byte short int long these four are used for holding integer number all the integer it, it can be positive or negative for instance byte is size is one byte like one usual uh, parking place okay so then short type it takes two bytes integer type it takes four bytes and long type it takes eight bytes so if it takes one byte so then it will hold a memory space only only one memory space one byte the minimum value it can hold negative 128 the positive value it can hold 127 including zero in, in between so that means why it can hold hold only 256 values okay within this range so then if it is short type then it it, it memory size is two bytes so the lowest number is 3200 3 to negative 3 to 7 6 8 and positive is 3 to 7 6 7 zero is in between okay so integer type it has this large number and then long time it has this kind of large number so in order to use in order to write a program an efficient program we need to consider the data type also otherwise we we will have a chance to misuse our data but for the small program we will practice in this class we don't care about data type the common data type we use integer int but although it takes four bytes but if i have a very small number for instance in my classroom if i have only 120 students if i know that and i want to give a, an a, an id for each student so then i don't need to try declare a variable integer or long time right so then i know that i have only 120 students so then i can start with zero or one and then byte type should be fine right but if i want to measure the length of light how far light passes in one light year or 10 light years or 100 or million or billion light years right how far then we need to consider about the long data type you see that this is the very 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 largest number right i can give example in another way for instance, when we, we stay in a hotel, right? We usually rent a hotel room, right? Or motel room, right? How many hotel room I should rent 
if I want to say one alone in one night, how many hotel room I should rent if I want to stay in for one night, for one day or something? One room usually, right? Okay, usually one right, we two. But how about if I have enough money? Should I book two rooms, three rooms, four rooms for me alone? It will, I can do it, I can do it, but I will not do it if it's my own money. Some people may do it if it's not their own money, someone else's money. There is not ethical to me. But that is a misuse, right? There is a misuse of money, right? You know that I cannot stay in more than one room. So why am I going to rent five rooms, eight rooms? I'm going to stay there, right? So if my data size is small, why I'm going to declare a large variable? That is not efficient. But for the small program, we don't care that. Okay, so all these are four are for integer type, holding integer or using integer type variable. And these two, float and double, <coughs> are used for sorry, holding decimal value, a value with decimal point. Okay, and Boolean is used to hold, which takes only one bit, store only true or false value. So how does a true value is hold in one bit? If it is zero, then it is false. If it is one, then it is true. Okay. Then character size, it takes two bytes, and in usually that takes ASCII characters. So almost, so two bytes takes how, how much? How much is the total will be 3200, 32,768 uh, actually. This many different characters it can be heard. So almost all characters in all human languages in this world is saved in. in, in Okay, so if you do it, but do this, in, read in the book, you will know this. Or also, if you do Google search, or if you go here, image search, then you will see the variable and their data type and their range in good, good, good pictorial form. Okay, maybe you see that. So these are the common data types used. Okay. So the character character value is hold is is display with a single code. Okay, and a string is hold string value string variable is given a value with double code. That is the difference between a string and a character. A character type variable can hold only one character. Okay, only one character. The the character value is hold in ASCII code. Okay, and a string time variable can hold any number of characters, no characters or one characters or as many characters as we need. Whenever we access files, data file, so all the content in a file is considered in one single string. Okay, so in our last program, in our last lecture, we discussed hello world. Hello world example in Java and in C sharp and in in C plus plus. Today I'm gonna expand this this program. Hello world with I think I got a wrong one. So maybe hello world I can get. Maybe four versions would be fine. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so hello world, right? So in our last lecture, we discussed, we discussed like this program, which says hello world, Bob was here, right? 
So if we run this program, then we found our output like this way. Right? For the first time, it takes a few seconds to display, and then next time we'll go. So we get this world, hello world, and then this is the output for hello world. And, and this line has output, Bob was here. You see that how do we get our output? Hello world, we gave this value within double code, but double code is not printed here, right? But there is a way if we want to print double code here, this is the console, then we need to put the double code using with the backslash, okay? Backslash double code, that, that means this double code, this double code will be printed. Mm -hmm. so. So then if we do like this way, so this double code will be printed. This double code will be printed, followed by a backslash. So, so, so you see that I got double code, okay? So in the book, you see these are called backslash characters. Okay, so if I want to say print, so hello world in all in, in double quote, then we need to put backslash double quote, then hello world. And this backslash is the starting point of the string, and this backslash is the ending point of the string, and this is called a string literal, an actual string value. So here in this program, I have not used any variable yet. Okay, what I'm doing, this is my print line method, I'm giving the value as a string literal. Okay, but this print line method, it accept value within its uh, parameter a string value or any, any, any in numeric value or something. So usually what I'm sup I was supposed to do I can, if I say this, this one, if I say hello world, hw, I can give any name of my variable, like for instance, hw, and then if I print hw, then hw, then print ln, so that means doing this, same thing. Okay, it is printing hello world. Okay, usually a statement is ended with a semicolon, but sometimes you can give multiple semicolons. So you see that I have given multiple semicolons, it will not, multiple semicolons means there is an empty line, there is an empty line, there is an empty line, okay? Compiler usually do not count, the compiler usually does not count these empty lines. Okay, so I, we need at least one empty uh, um, back, semicolon when you write in english natural english we end this in the sentence by a period right a dot so in most of the programming languages we end with a semicolon okay so here what is my variable name hello world hw okay so hw okay variable name and as we told that we can give any name of a variable but we cannot start with a number at the beginning so it will work but it will not work so if i want to give one is w2 it is not going to work okay so you see that there is a red underline small very tiny right it's a tiny underline so there is a wrong name of a variable okay so variable cannot be started with a number first. You can have a number at the end or after the first character. So here what is happening? This is my variable and this is the value of my variable and this of equal sign is called assignment operator. Today we will learn operator. Okay, and then we are printing a hello world. So whatever I give my variable name, I am printing that variable name, okay? So then easy, I do not need to remember what I have my value here. Just making, like a, making a phone call to my friends, just by searching my friend's name, okay? And it will 
go to the phone call actual phone call will go to the number similar thing okay and then this is a string variable if i say i want to declare int an integer variable int say a is i'm sorry a is equal to 32 my friend is 32 years old okay then how can i combine how can i combine this so a variable must be declared first before it use we use it okay so hello world and we can say plus age i'm sorry age so what will be happen here the value of age will be printed here not age if we want to print age then i need to put age in double quote and then plus age this a is means this is a variable so you see that when i click over here it it links it links with this line number seven variable okay and this is string literal you understand the difference between a string literal and a string bell okay so you will know more in later in whenever we say uh, for string operation every program does uh, every program uses string almost all program almost all program uses string and there are string operations so this is why string is a common data type but it is not a primitive data type it is a built-in data type how many primitive data types are there Eight. Okay, string is not a primitive, but it is the built-in. Okay, but now we see, so string sometimes string behaves differently. For instance, if I say hello, print so one plus two plus three plus one plus two plus three. So what will be my, my output here? What do you think? Yeah, I'm in class right now, mom. What do you think that this output will on? be here? One plus two plus three. It's five, right? Fine. Or six, right? It is printed in six, right? Okay, now if we say one plus two plus three plus A's, then what will be my output? One plus two plus three plus eight. Okay. Let us see. Thirty-eight. But then I have another question. If I say, what will be my output? You see the difference. Uh, let me write both. Let me write both. Say is plus so I dot three different different one. I want to write one more. Everybody, please give attention. Plus this one. So we want to understand what will be the difference between this, this four line, line number 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay. So line number 15 and 16 will be same. 38 right 32 plus 6 38 okay then how about this line number this one 17 and 18 these are not same okay the rule of thumb is that for the print line method it, it start 
what it get it finds something something string this is a string right then the letter that it makes the everything as a string then similarly similarly if i write another variation plus plus is okay so these three will be different okay so for this one is first is initial first one is string okay so then it will print one two three three two and this will print one two three and then three two and this will print one plus three thirty six thirty eight but this then we follow it by empty but you cannot find the difference between these and and this although they are different but you cannot find any difference between these and these two okay so let us run this program and then it's a good thing that you please practice yourself okay and try to understand you can do google search and you can uh, then you understand what is happening here so in a is so this is an integer number right then it says then 36 plus 6 38 then 36 plus all integer then you will add up integer so then 38 and this one since start of is a string is empty string so then it will start all everything will be made up as a string so then how do we string we this is actually plus sign but it, it looks at like it's the plus sign but this plus sign is not the arithmetic plus sign it is called string concatenation concatenate or add joining strings okay so then it is getting output one two three and then 33 and here is same thing but since we do not have any space then we do not realize the different but if we give a space over here we do not realize here there is also a space after this you see that after if i click over here there is an one space but how can i how can i explain you maybe plus say two if i give another number then it will show yes sir yeah so th that means rule of thumb is that the print line method if it gets a string well, as soon as it, it gets string after that everything becomes string so if the string my string is at the beginning so then the string my is beginning right so everything is a string so that means it is not adding it's like numeric number so that it is displaying one plus two plus three so maybe you are confusing so if i say a is w for instance here instead of this one two, 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 i could put my a is w my my a is w is a string right hello world so this string if i can but this is a good way to understand that this is one two three and then a is equal to three two so this is not a number it looks like a number but it is a string okay now do uh, my goal is to explain you what is the difference between a number and a string so whenever is if i say hello world i could say like this i could say 101 right one zero, this 101 is a is a not a number it is a string okay i i i, I sometimes i tell us joke to my friends or student okay there's an interview board okay so some there are some candidates there they came for the job so the interviewer asked a simple question what is one plus one what is one plus one okay then that there was a mathematician mathematics student he said two i said okay thank you that and there is a statistician he said probably true. 
the statistician what with probability, right? He said probably true. Then there was a computer scientist. He said, in which number system? Is it binary or decimal? Decimal one plus one two, right? In binary one plus one, one zero, right? So he said, and then the last person are the law student. I don't know, he's going through, I don't know, okay? Then the, when he got the question, how much one plus one? He said, how much do you need? You understand? He said, how much do you need? Sometimes we know that the attorneys, they crack some true to false, false to true, right? So then he, he was asked, his answer was, how much do you need? Okay? So although we see sometimes same thing, but with different perspective, we have different result, right? For instance, one plus one, something like this. So then, then maybe you will understand uh, HW. So, okay. So here, on zero one is not a number. It is a string, but when it display, when we display it, it will sh show on, it will not display with double quote. So sometimes we confuse. Okay. Please do not be confused. So do some practice. Okay. Now, in our last lecture, I gave you some homework. Okay, I asked you at the end of our last lecture, I gave you some, oh, uh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see here. Oh, one thing, you see, these are the comments, okay? If, I think read the book, then you will understand that these are the comments. If I want to comment a line that is disable a line, I don't want to delete it, I want to delete, disable it, so that the compiler will ignore it during program execution time. Sometimes, this is called single line, comment sometime if we want to like mm, if we want to disable multiple lines then we start with slash star and we end with star slash and everything in between will be commented out okay these are the this slide it says okay so please go through this and white space is ignored sometime most of the time and but so not always okay so then in my last lecture oh these are the backslash characters these are the backslash characters did i go through this slide or a different slide in last let me see module two okay variable assignment data types two, two, two. So a string is, string value is given within double code, but is, is character value is given within single code. Okay. You cannot give more than one character for a single, for a character type variable. If you give more than one, it will take only the first one. Okay. I like you to practice this program. Although it has this, this program written everything in one line, but you will see the output will be different. Okay due to the reason of the backslash backslash t means it will make one tab some space between the between two when it display okay two characters or two words okay so please practice this program okay so in all three languages please practice those okay okay and oh my I believe I you know in, in my last lecture I going I went through another slide, not this slide, right? I went through maybe maybe module one part two at the end. Yeah, I, I went through module one part two. Okay, so that that means my my mistake. Then I will go to part three beginning from the beginning to the okay. No problem. Okay, this one I went through in the last lecture. Okay. Sorry, my, my, my bad. So I showed the uh, skeleton of a program and at the end of this program, I dis, uh, I discuss here, hello all program and I discuss variable here and I gave you some homework, right? To practice, okay? 
How many of you did have a chance to practice this? Yeah. I wish I would have candy. So next time I will bring some candies, okay? Then I will give. Uh, and especially, I asked you to memorize or practice this call, like scanner here. I did not go in depth for now, but I like you to track do practice. These are used for taking variable value using keyboard. Okay, and please don't get behind. Every day you will see that I will give some homework to practice. I used to give this as a in-class activity. But this class size is large and due to COVID-19, I don't like to be go close to you. And I think you will not like me, right? Close to, to come close to you. So I'm giving you this as, as a homework to, to turn it to yourself. In case you do not know, you get trouble, then share with me. I'll help you, okay? So these are the programs that I asked you to practice. And there is another program problem like here. I like you to practice. OK, today the write a program that asks the user weight. OK, in pounds, maybe 140 pounds or 130 pounds or 150 pounds and print how much the person weighs. So this is the problem one. And another problem is that, please practice, uh, you will be asked to give a, your, uh, to enter the temperature, today's temperature, in one system, okay, maybe Fahrenheit, and convert it to Celsius. Or take it in Celsius and convert it to Fahrenheit, right? So this is the formula. Actually, the conversion formula is conversion is if I C divided by five, five equal to F minus Sorry, I lost my pen, uh, so I'm looking for I should buy another one. If minus 32 by 9. Okay, equal to R by 4. In physics, you should know this. C is in centigrade, F is in Fahrenheit, and 9. <clears throat> okay, centigrade has C minus zero, zero lower scale is zero and, and maximum is 100. <clears throat> so then F minus 32 by 9 equal to R in Kelvin, R by 4. This is the formula, okay? So if you want to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you will use the first two part. If you want to convert Fahrenheit to Kelvin, then you will use this second part. Do we practice this program, okay? You will need to use scanner for Java to scan to get a number keyboard, okay? Okay, and another program here. So this this may be a little bit tricky. So you can you can you can do it for yourself, okay? For instance. They, an, an average person burns 2,500 uh, 2, calories per day. There are 3,500 calories is one pound of fat, and there are 365 days in a year. So write a program that how much an average person consume. These are on slide, okay? Everything is on slide. You don't need to take pictures. You can take pictures so that you can remain for the ask. Okay, that's good. Okay, has anyone any questions so far? Everybody is good. Okay. What I what I ask you to do, please, 
practice each of these in all three languages. The first thing you will practice in your lab language. Okay, that is the primary one. Do not never miss this. And the second thing you will do in another language. So in this course, we will, we are learning how many languages? Yes, sir. How many languages? Three languages. It is a great opportunity. I learned. I remember that. I learned the first language is QBasic, is Quick Basic. It's most likely pseudocode format. At the point I, at that time, I learned programming language without computer. I did not have many computers. <laughs> I learned programming language was just by reading book. I went to library. Any, I spent many hours to understand what is this, what is this. I went to my professor. That, and that time, I was undergraduate student, my uh, junior student. Then after that, when I learned that, I learned C, C programming language, the predecessor of C++, okay, the subset of C++. Then I learned C++ C language. Then after a few, two years, maybe, at the time I, I was graduating with my master's in computer science, I learned C++. And then I, then I learned object-oriented programming. At that point, I learned Visual Basic, Visual Fox Pro. Then I learned actually how to develop application program software. Later, I learned HTML, I learned Java. And once you know one programming language, pretty in depth. Then learning another language is easy for you. You can learn it by yourself in a few weeks. Remember that. How do we teach, if you are a teacher, to teach someone a language, a human language? Okay, but you want to teach me, for instance, I don't know Spanish language. If you want to teach me Spanish, okay? Think about that, how difficult it would be if I do not know any language. Okay, if I do not know English even, a no language. I don't know, I don't, if I do not know your language, that means English language, okay? It would be difficult for me, right? to teach. It is difficult for you to teach. It will be difficult for me to learn. Okay, but it will be easier for you. At least I have a common language, right? Between teacher and student. And learning another language or teaching another language is easier, right? So this is really good, good course that if you are learning three languages within one semester, within your first year. But please, this course, I told you that is a swimming course, swimming program, okay? No matter how many theory classes you take, you will not be learn how to swim unless you dive into water. So diving water means I'm asking you to practice program, okay? A little by little, not I'm not asking you to do something rocket science every day. I think spend an hour or two hours, then you will be able to do. Okay, and that's a, that was the slide for the module one, part one. Has anyone any question about this? So yeah, I, I spent some extra time maybe, but I wanted to give you some lesson so that you remember that. Okay, so then our, let me see, I forgot the schedule. According to our schedule, okay, today we are supposed to develop to discuss module two data type expression, okay, and I'm sorry, I'm behind. I cannot finish, but I discussed string and one D. Uh, I cannot do one D. I mean, next next lecture I will do. Okay, but let us finish. We have few minutes, then we can discuss data type and expression. So module two part one. So.
So we learned what is a variable and how to assign value to a variable, and then I discuss data type. Okay. So our today's goal will be to combine all of those to start writing program. And already we we have started that, right? Okay. So we know that a main program is the starting point. Main method is the starting point of our program, and we discuss comment. Okay, and white space is ignored in some places, but not always. Okay. So for your program, for instance, if you if you give a white space here, like like this, it is a matter. Right? And if you give a white space in between here, it doesn't matter. In, in, in our output, you will not see any effect. Compiler ignores this this white space in between. Okay. And then we discuss character and string type. String type is 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 given value is given with the string literal that is with Enclosed in double code and then character is given within single code. Okay, so this is a string. This is entirely the string. So this is a string, or we can say it is a string literal. The value is string literal. Okay, and this is in C sharp. In order to display a string in Java, we use print ln method, and in C sharp, we use right line method and in c++ we use c out this is not a method this is an output stream stream okay like a flow okay so an endl is the end line that is equivalent to backslash n is n line okay and then these are called escape characters there are some characters that do not print directly but that are used to do multiple things or do something indirectly and those characters start with a backslash b backslash but there is no space between backslash and the character. So backslash B means is backspace. When do we when do we press backspace on your keyboard? What happens? The character in its left side get deleted, right? So whenever you type in, in MS Word and if you type in backspace, that is in MacBook, it's called delete keyboard keyboard, right? Delete key. What happens when you click it? The character left side, its left side, where is the pointer is gets deleted right so here my character is here at this point my my cursor is blinking between uh, back and space here so then what happen if i push the backspace backspace key then which one will be deleted k or s k right so the same same thing it it happens if we say backslash b this b will be deleted from the output yeah. And this is called tab, and this is called new line, and this is called carry as return. Okay, this is double code, this is single code, this is backslash. In order to print a backslash, you need to give an, give another backslash. Backslash itself is a backslash character. So okay, please practice this within a string. Okay. And then I asked you to practice this program. You will see, realize. Try to understand the difference between output and make some changes. Okay, tweet your program, twist it, and then see. See, and then this is the string concatenation here in C, but in Java and C, -sharp, we use plus sign. But here in C, -sharp, C, we use two less than sign. Okay, this is called output operator. Output actually string concatenation concatenation okay. And then we discuss variable. 
in order to declare a variable what do we need to do we need to declare the type first then variable name if we have multiple variables to declare then all the variables will be separated by comma you can give space or do not speak space do not give space but this comma is the separator okay and at the end there will be a semicolon okay and a variable name is a an identifier is variable is called an identifier that is means identifier that means id we say how we identify some what this variable is a memory location right name of a memory location okay and there are some naming convention read the book some naming convention you cannot give you can give any name of a variable but you cannot give any name so then i say any name that means there are some special words in the program all program almost all programming languages those are built in words and these words mean something we cannot give a variable name like with this name okay we can use you see that all of these this is the keyword these are called keywords there are some special words that are used to construct program and and these are special meaning you will learn some of the but maybe some of this i we are familiar with right which one let us see which one we are familiar with we familiar with boolean right this is a type right we discuss boolean we discuss byte we we know char we this we know that class java or c -sharp program start with the class and we discuss we know what is this one int 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 double float some of this right so our program start with static we it is void some of this we you know right maybe not in depth but some look sometime and then be familiar with this when you give your name of a variable do not you cannot give this name about this name okay but because one thing is that how you don't need to memorize all of this name by the time you, you program you will be familiar with you see that these are the keyword you keyword these are color differently so class as soon as you type in class it is blue blue color right so then public it is a keyword it is static is a keyword void is a keyword okay int 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 is a keyword you see that different so by looking the color you can see that something different okay so almost all languages uh, uh the, these keywords are almost same for all languages but there are some different between language to language but one thing is quickly remember that all keywords are in single word for each there is no space in between size of there is no space in between stack alloc there is no space in between type of there is no space in between okay all keywords are single word and this is in 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 c++ is one of the oldest older programming languages c++ used multiple words but they use underscore but modern programming languages like java and c sharp they do not use underscore only the c++ this old is one of the older languages so it is used underscore you don't need to remember memorize all of this you will be familiar with this okay first be familiar with this okay these are the naming convention that we need to follow some rules one of the thing in naming convention you will hear this word is called camel case notation camel case notation camel is as a bump right on his uh, shoulder so you start with say like the every every the first word start with a small character c camel and then every other word start with an upper case letter so by looking this we can say we can we can say 
that we can easily you can see that our variable name right for instance if i say i like camel case notation then we see that how many variables we how many words we have right in some languages we can use you can use underscore so underscore is fine is also valid but you cannot give space in between an identifier name is a single name single word okay you cannot give two words if you want to give two words either use camel case or use underscore nothing else you cannot use dash you cannot use dash it doesn't allow okay and then assignment operator in pseudocode format you can use backslash in some books you will see backslash but you can give equal sign that is fine okay and this is the equal sign total equal that means is this equal sign is called assignment operator this equal sign okay is not we will see that later that there is an equal equal operator double equal we will know that later <laughs> So declaring a variable in pseudocode format, we say we say begin S1, this value is 3, S2 is a variable is 2, and then S3 is 1, then S4 equal to 0. And then when we print something, then if, what will be your output? I discuss with live program. Okay. If you start is beginning a string, then everything become string. Or as soon as it gets a string, everything become, become string. Okay. And in Java language, so please practice this, okay? Practice this program. What you can do, we can copy and code from here and paste in your program and try to run it and see the output. Okay. This is another example. So we have pseudocode and we have actual program code. And then in Java, C++ and C Sharp, you have in all three languages. How many of you are here taking C++ lab? Hmm, that's good. C++ is different than C Sharp or Java, right? Although it is called C Sharp, and people think that C, C Sharp and C++ are similar. No, that's different, okay? Java and JavaScript are two different languages, like Apple and Pineapple. Are the same, same fruit. Okay, but both has apple, right? Hey, fruit has their name, pineapple and apple, but they are completely different fruits, right? So, like this is why C and C sharp, all the both have C, they are completely different languages. And Java and JavaScript, those are two different languages. But once you learn one language, then you can learn another language. So in, in this language, we saw that we give the type first, right? Data type first, right? In JavaScript, you will give the variable name first, then type. In academia, you will not be taught JavaScript. JavaScript and HTML, you may not, you will not be taught until you take the elementary level course, very basic level course. Because those languages are very simple. You can learn yourself. There are many, there are many genius middle school students or elementary school students, they know HTML, they know JavaScript by themselves, right? You know that? Okay. So please practice these programs, okay? This will be a good start for us to go through with these sample programs. And as soon as you go, this, so uh, there are few programs today, okay? Then you will see that we are getting familiar with, with something, okay? So like, let us think about two weeks ago, two weeks ago when we met here, or you did not, you did not come to this course, if you are new, okay, in this programming, you do not have any previous background. Do you have any improvement? Have you learned something new? Is this interesting? 
does that motivate you to learn something okay if your answer is yes for all this question then you are good to go okay if you do not give yourself motivation i cannot push you really believe me whenever if you know programming you will spend many hours hours after hours last night even i i was doing something i i was working and until 4:30 am so if you know if you get interest in programming you will you will spend whole night sometimes 